Thanks for having me. So my name is Matthew McDool. I'm uh, the Environmental Compliance and Development Manager at Human Agriculture, uh, based in Tasmania. And I'm part of the first uh, strategy group, which was the cross sector connections. So also in the cross sector connections team is Millie and Eldine, who you've already met. But I've also got with me Greg Finn, who's a New South Wales commercial fisherman, predominantly dives for abalone, uh, urchins, but also some uh, ocean line fishing. Scott Rasga, who's the general manager for the uh, Sea Harvest Fishing Company, uh, predominantly based in, in WA, but they also do some work in Northern Australia. Laura Orn, so Laura's uh, job title is Fisheries Management Officer, and she works at the Department of Primary Industries and Regional Development in Western Australia. Vicky Burley uh, is the Afternoon Shift Manager at Tassel Group Limited in Tassie. Uh, she's got a big responsibility looking after two production facilities down there. So, my question to you is, how much have you ever really thought about how the seafood industry is connected? Uh, that's something that we sat down and thought about, and that's something that as a team, we spent six months working on. When we first got together, we realised that we share common themes and values despite having such different backgrounds and working in such different sectors. Those were the obvious benefits that the seafood industry delivers to us as individuals, to our families, and also to our communities. We discussed the importance of sustainable fisheries, but also talked about the opportunities for future generations to work within the seafood industry. Based on this, we came up with a, a team goal, and that goal was to produce a short video aimed at raising awareness within the seafood industry, but also broader Australia, uh, on the significant role in which the industry has in supporting communities, both economically and socially. The idea of the video was to promote that positive message. And we're going to use uh, people within the industry to tell their stories. We came up with consistent questions, which we asked people from the industry, and that allowed us to identify common themes uh, amongst people from different sectors. And the plan was then to produce the video and distribute it on social media. During the project, we decided to also send out an online survey this allowed us to capture much more data than just conducting the, the video interviews. We were sent out to various sources, but the predominant source was actually a NSFILP alumni, and we got an overwhelming response rate from those uh, uh, former uh, graduates from the program. Over 40% responded, and so that in total meant that we had over 540 uh, responses to our questions. As part of the online survey, we also collected survey demographics. So as you can see, it was male dominated in the responses. That's perhaps a reflection of the industry in which we work in. What was nice to see was we had a really good spread uh, in ages. So a good representation from the different age groups that work in our industry. And also a really good response rate from the different states and territories in which we all work. So once we collated the data from the survey questions, of which were there were six. We went through all the responses in, in detail. As you'll see, the common theme throughout the presentation is this word cloud, and that's just a visual representation of the, the commonalities and word themes throughout. I'm now passing on to Greg, who will go through the responses to the first question. Thanks, Matt. Um, my name's Greg Finn. I'm a Port Stephens-based um, commercial fisher. I work the whole coast of New South Wales. I work out of all the major ports in New South Wales. So the question that I was asked to analyse uh, was question number one, what is your connection to the seafood industry and what does it mean to you and your family? So in answering that question, I've got a small slideshow of some pictures which I think relate back to that question.
Personally, the seafood industry has created a way of life and income to sustain my family. Further to this, seafood provides a healthy lifestyle and shared experiences for my family. My son Sam is about to turn 15 and enjoys spending time with me on work trips during his school holidays and is eager to gain skills that I've learned over many years that hopefully Sam will pass on to his children. Sharing a passion allows connection to environment and creates family relationships and experiences. Often a feat in the Finn household comprises fresh, innovative ways to consume a meal of day's catch seafood, connecting the seafood industry to my family. During the process of creating questions for our survey, challenging the interviewee has yielded common themes and surprising answers that provide insight into the real value of our coastal resources and the benefits for our coastal communities. Respondents are a mixture of first, second, third and even fourth generation fishing family businesses. Process workers, fish farmers, fishery managers, researchers, legislators and cultural fishers who in many cases also identify as wreck fishers. Common themes linking connections to the seafood industry identified include lifestyle, flexibility, honourable career, opportunity, earning potential, providing for their families. Other respondents mentioned family enjoyment, healthy food consumption and connection to the ocean. It is who we are, it is what we do. The major thread identified to question one with many respondents is passion. Passion being the human bond that connects us all to what is a most important benefit of our seafood industry. Johnny Alessi, a Port Stephens based estuary commercial fisher, shares his family history in post-war immigration Australia, connecting Johnny and his family to the seafood industry, including Johnny discussing the opportunity to see skills and knowledge gained from spending time with his uncles and his father, and that this knowledge continue and be passed on to future generations. As a single dad with a young teenage daughter, fishing allows Johnny flexibility in his family work commitments. Darren Dodds, a fish processor and retailer, connects the seafood industry and the value to him and his family by speaking about the contribution locally sourced seafood makes to tourism in the region. <coughs> locally grown <coughs> oysters, commercial fishing and recreational fishing play in that local economy and the contribution made to the cultural and social experiences of visitors. Thank you. It's going to pass on to Scott. Thanks, Rick. So for, for my question we had, what do you think the priorities are to ensure the sustainability of the fishing industry? From the work cloud, we can see a lot of different responses. And as a group, a group, a group we reviewed all these responses and selected three words which were common amongst the responses to see how they relate to our mission of connecting Australian seafood communities for all generations. For me, these responses were fisheries management, social licence, and community. Fisheries management is about working with all stakeholders to ensure the sustainability of the fishery. It is there to protect fisheries and those who access the resource, whether it be commercial, recreational or indigenous. From the responses I received, the comments which resonated with me were, a researcher in management said, I think everybody wants the best for our fisheries. And the commercial fisher also said, we can all aim to be more sustainable. Looking at the comments, I think everybody wants to do more and we're all well connected. For my industry especially, Fisheries management is ex extremely important. We operate in the UNESCO listed World Heritage Area of Shark Bay. If fisheries management didn't exist in this area, the results would be catastrophic. A social license or a social license to operate. It is the acceptance, the acceptance by the community of an organisation. A social license to operate is made up of three major components, legitimacy, credibility and trust. 
as scientists said, ensuring that social wellness license advocated by all sectors of the community. And the fisheries manager said, with social license, we need to bring the sector back into the public eye and not hide away from it. We all need to be accepted by each other and we all need to work together on our social rights. And last slide, but for the priorities of, to ensure the sustainability of the seafood industry is community. Community responses provided, a fishing association member said, improving our relationship and connection with the Australian community. And a business manager said, responsibility of the whole community, not just the seafood industry. We have found that community is the key. Our strategy group's aim was to highlight and create an understanding of the benefits of cross-sector connection. And this starts with community. We are all in this together, and we all need to work together within our communities and educate, educate each other to grow together as one. I'll now pass over to Melanie for the Thanks, Gareth. Thanks, Gareth. Question three. What is the biggest misconception the public have about the seafood industry? Fisheries and management. This was a common theme that arose between both question two, priorities to ensure sustainability, and question three, biggest misconception the public have. The responses ranged from a scientist who responded that the seafood industry operates under minimal legislative constraints with ineffective fisheries management. To a retailer who responded that the biggest misconception in their view was that fish stocks are overfished and in danger of rapid decline. Australia has some of the best managed fisheries in the world, but the punters don't realise it. And an individual in management with the biggest misconception being that fishermen <coughs> rape and pillage the sea. To see that these responses were received for both of the aforementioned questions, it highlights to me the need to raise the profile of the seafood industry. To be able to gain a clearer understanding of legislative requirements for not only fishing practices, but also environmental impacts, as well as sustainability for the future. Which leads me to the next common theme. The second theme that was apparent was unsustainability, a topic which I'm sure you are all familiar with. With responses ranging from, it is harvested unsustainably by people who don't care, to ecological and economic sustainability of the seafood industry is only an issue for seafood producers. This is a misconception which I believe needs to be delved into much further to raise awareness to the wider Australian community of the measures being taken to ensure sustainability of the seafood industry for generations to come. Lastly, the third theme that was apparent through survey results was environmental damage. Responses were hard hitting, such as, environmental damage is caused by fishing, wild and aquaculture. Aquaculture is not sustainable and is in fact bad for the environment. And for the third time we see the words, rape and pillage. Fishers rape and pillage the ocean. These words, intense, hard hitting, not to be taken lightly. Reaffirming the mission of this group of 18 are working towards, to connect Australian seafood community for all generations. I'd like to pass over to Laura for question four. Thanks, Millie. So my name is Laura Orm, I'm a fisheries manager at NWA, I'm managing the Western York Lobster Resource, the West Coast Deep Sea Crab Resource and the South Coast Crustacean Resource. So the question I had to look at and summarise was, what does the seafood industry mean to your local community and what would happen if it just didn't exist? So I can almost guarantee if I asked everyone that in this room that question, um, today, a standout immediate response would probably be economic impact. So as you can expect, it's not very surprising that this was a common theme emerging um, with respondents to this question. Although it's an obvious answer, it actually can't be taken lightly. And this is supported through some of the words used in the survey responses. Detrimental to the economy, ripple effects to secondary services. The use of these particular words are really powerful and definitely speaks volume to the immediate negative economic impact the seafood industry would have to the community. The second theme emerging from this question was loss of capability, meaning 
loss of capability to inform direct fisheries management and loss of capability to consume sustainably sourced seafood. As a fisheries manager, the theme <coughs> of loss of capability, particularly in reference to loss of stewardship, really hit me hard. For example, currently I'm working with the Western Rock Lobster um, industry and we're working towards increasing mitigating me measures um, to reduce whale entanglements in humpback whales. And I can't be out in the water all the time. I can't see what's actually happening out there. And to an extent, I rely on my fishermen to share their knowledge, to share their experience. You know, there's some people that say, Laura, in this area, the guys just aren't doing their um, management arrangement that they're meant to be doing. And to me, that just shows that they are absolutely stewards for the resource that they access. The leading theme emerging in relation to what would happen if the seafood industry didn't exist in your local community was community impact. A majority, yeah, a majority of these responses identified the importance of seafood industry to community as a sense of identity, a sense of culture and belonging. Statements, statements such that stood out to me were a tragedy, a loss of identity and the seafood is our community. So however, in contrast, some responses that came back were at, were odd, at odds with this. Words such as wouldn't be aware nor care or not seen as important. This indicates to me that the seafood industry in these particular areas ultimately has minimal involvement or impact on the social aspect to the local community. I mean, the connection between the consumer and the fisher is broken. I don't think the non-fishing seafood community would either be aware nor care if the local industry didn't exist. For me, these words are really sad. I will now pass you over to Vicky, who is summarising question five. Good afternoon. So as previously introduced, my name is Vicky Burley and I'm a shift manager from Casdow down in Hobart. I'll be summarising question five and six this afternoon. So question five is what is the biggest challenge the seafood industry is facing in the future? The first real dominant word that was resonated through our questionnaire was climate change. The conversation of climate change has changed the industry as a whole. This is shown through the statements such as warming ocean temperatures and loss of key habitats such as algae and seafood that provide refuge for juvenile fish species. Another one was res reduction, sorry, reduction in quality and quantity due to natural disasters and climate change. The following one was, was social licence. Social licence are important to the seafood industry in obtaining community support and licence to operate. This is evidenced through these statements. Overcoming community misconceptions and building social licence to enable public policy issues to be evenly debated. Also, getting recognition of the seafood industry legitimately, legitimately in terms of social licence. And the third word that resonated for question five, access to resource. Access to resource was a key challenge discussed by the seafood industry when asked to identify future challenges. <coughs> to professional fishers, to retailers and management, we received statements such as, maintaining secure access to the resource, maintaining a sustainable resource and educating the public on how they can help to support and maintain it. So that is question number five. So followed from that, I also have the responses for question number six, which are, if there was one thing you could change about the seafood industry, what would it be? The first word, Sorry, the first respondent was public perception. One out of five respondents, respondents relating to this question gave this as their particular response. Obviously, this clearly indicates
case that fishers currently feel they have a poor or misrepresented image and not seen to be hard working and dedicated professionals that they are. The next word that resonated to me was management. Management was a dominant word that stood out from the survey, indicating that there appears to be a lack of transparency in providing and communicating information from government as per quoted provide. Rather than having government fisheries managers focused on keeping the industry within the regulations and their known comfort zone, have them the fishers develop agents where the, their task is to understand the communities and fishers and work on opportunities with them. Level amongst all stakeholders, there is an opportunity for improvement moving forward. The following word is connection. This is pretty repeating in our, in our survey. Connection was another dominant word that resonated from survey respondents as well. And this aligns with the concept of what our strategy group have been working towards, cross-sector connections. Thank you. Thanks, Mickey. So as Matt mentioned in the introduction, we had intended to produce a video presentation. In all, we interviewed 15 people who provided raw, unscripted and unedited comments, which assisted us immensely in our individual questions and presentations. I'd like to thank all those who participated in the video and appreciate them taking their time to assist. Unfortunately, due to some, sen some sensitive issues around the draft edit of the video and feelings on how it will be perceived, we have shelved the video for now, but we all desire to deliver a product worthy of the industry we work in. Our <coughs> for our project, so, what did we get out of our strategy group? We had some great stories, great people, worthy of a professional campaign. We will advocate for an organisation to take up this opportunity. We'd like to conduct the survey, we'll conduct the survey again in another 12 months. We'll ask upon uh, NSILP participants and alumni to be advocates for the cross-sector cross -sector communications and leader space in the future. We'll also pass this information on to Larry Price, CEO of Ocean Watch, and Greta Seal, Director of the Centre for Marine Socioecology. Conclusions. The seafood industry provides us with employment and allows us to support our families and communities. The seafood industry is facing an uncertain future. With sustainability of stocks, environmental change, and social licence being major issues. This will likely create conflict and divisions amongst the different sectors. This is a time where we need to stick together. From our project, we have found that we are all linked to the industry in more ways than one. It is important as emerging leaders in the industry that we help facilitate balance, respectful discussions to ensure we can all enjoy the fruits of the ocean. Thank you from the cross-sector community team 